Welcome back to Storm Center. Meteorologist Paul Goodall live in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. And we keep talking about uh, the damage. We're showing you the destruction. I just want to put a scale on this as well. I stand six foot five on a good day. You can see this debris wrapped around this tree, which towers over my head. It was probably a lot taller before a Friday night as a tornado came through and ripped off the top of that tree. But uh, this is not just one lone tree. There's kind of a row of trees here. And you can see, I don't know what type of piece of equipment is lodged uh, around some of these trees and you hear even car horns going off all this kind of uh, aluminum siding from the building well that way and that way and even across the road here highway 61 that used to be a lumber yard and it is just uh, a scene of uh, all types of mangled kind of mess wafting in kind of a breezy day this evening this morning is the food from a lot of volunteers Volunteers out here cooking, trying to uh, keep all the first responders, people who are volunteering, people who have lost everything, just keeping a warm kind of meal in their stomach because there's there's no power going on here. People have lost even their gas and ability to, to cook uh, locally. So it's a slow and arduous process. And there are things like this American flag, which is being suspended above this crane here, which, uh, well, is still standing tall. Looks like there might be a chainsaw kind of holding it down down here. It's a very windy afternoon, but nothing like the winds that blew through. 170 mile per hour winds with that EF4 tornado on Friday night. But uh, Chris, while we're still recovering from this, we are still concerned about the next chance severe weather, and that could even bring some rain here towards the end of the week. Chris? Yeah, likely we'll bring some, you know, rain, maybe some thunderstorms, but at least the severe potential, the worst of it, will be north of Rolling Fork. So we don't expect a repeat there. But similar scenes are possible if the storms pan out as the forecast. We'll get to that. I want to talk about tomorrow's trouble spots. And we're not dealing with severe weather. We're still in winter here. Winter mode. It's going to be like, you know, the middle of February in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Cold afternoon highs barely getting above freezing. We've got squally snow showers, lake effect snow. Some of this may accumulate too, especially if it happens early in the morning or later in the afternoon as the sun's going down. A mix of rain and snow here across the I-80, I-90 corridor, eastern parts of Ohio getting up through Western New York, breezy conditions going to be raw too, and then a cold rain as you work your way into, say, western parts of Pennsylvania. Big concerns here across the West. We know today there was about a 200 mile stretch of Interstate 5 that's been shut down still from Redding all the way to the Oregon state line because of very difficult um, snowy conditions, blizzard conditions, and see the higher elevations here. The Siskiyou is getting up towards Mount Shasta, and then some of the passes as you work your way into Oregon. Um, we'll see some improvement as we head through tomorrow, but still some massive uh, precip here from California and then spreading east, getting into the Great Basin and then starting to approach Utah and eastern parts of Idaho. So I-15 becoming a problem, especially later in the afternoon. Heads up for some flash flooding, some squalls, maybe some thunder, lightning, hail will be a possibility, even concerns for severe weather in say Southern California, given all the instability and the unsettled pattern that we've been in. Flash flooding I mentioned was going to be an issue from the Central Valley, working through the Bay Area, Central Coast, and then back through Southern California, all the way down through San Diego. So be cautious about this. And then as we look down the pipeline, Chris, this active pattern with severe weather, certainly later this week, but then even heading into next week, looks like we're going to repeat this all over again. It does, Chris, and uh, by the end of this week, Thursday into Friday, severe weather threat uh, that is going to be unfolding, and we'll be covering that for you here on the Weather Channel. Here's the threat area on Thursday, and look at the expansive nature of it. More than a dozen states touched by at least the possibility of severe weather. In some cases, uh, all of Arkansas and almost all of Missouri under the threat. Again, this is on Thursday and Friday, so still a little ways away. Growing confidence. It's likely there's going to be thunderstorms to the extent of which they're severe. That still remains to be seen. Here's where it all begins. Big area of low pressure right now, and this is going to be marching off to the east, heading east of the Rockies in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. You got a lot of that energy. In the meantime, though, there's a lot of moisture that's coming into the west. There's going to be a snowy side to this as well. But while the snow is falling in parts of the upper Midwest, moisture coming up from the south, creating an environment where thunderstorms will thrive, possibly be strong and severe. Again, details still need to be worked out. But Thursday and especially on Friday, 
Could be another very big day for severe weather. Heavy rain comes with that. Here's a look uh, at the area of low pressure that eventually develops. A lot of tight lines uh, means uh, a lot of strong winds, snow, rain, and thunderstorms on the way.